Hi there, I'm Sandy Alnock, artist and paper crafter here on YouTube, and this is the start of a Copic Craft and Pencil series. And I'm going to be using the Heart You stamp set from Penny Black, drawn by Mo Manning. She makes really, really cute little people stamps. And I'm starting this, this Copic Craft and Pencil series because it's really easy to blend on this paper. And I know a lot of people struggle with blending. And this might be a good start for you in trying to learn how to blend because this already gives you that mid-tone. So you're not blending into white, you're blending into a mid-tone. It's challenging because your colors are going to be different because you have this underlying color. But the blending portion of it works really, really well. If you have a Copic hex chart, make sure you make a hex chart on this paper so that you end up getting colors that are going to match. You see what they're going to look like when they're actually colored on this. Because usually you have to use stronger colors so that they'll show up. So I'm using a couple of different skin tones, but it looks like mush for the moment. Hang tight because we are going to add some stuff to it that's going to make that pop and look so beautiful when this is done. And I did use the word craft when I titled this video because most people see Desert Storm and they don't know what that means. Craft paper is different than Desert Storm. Desert Storm is a paper made by Nina, which means it has the same kind of properties that their other classic crest papers have. And craft paper can be made out of a lot of different kinds of paper. So you can try out your Copics on them, but know that it may not work the same as this Desert Storm. Just wanted to clarify that for you. So I'm coloring this little dude, and I think, I'm not sure, it could be a little boy or a little girl. It could be either one, depending on how you color it and what you want to do with it. But I've stamped it in a very, very, very light ink. And you can use a lot of different colors of light ink because the ink is basically going to disappear. I like using dye inks for this rather than pigment inks, so keep that in mind. And all the supplies, by the way, are going to be in the description down below, as they always are. But the cool thing about this is that when you have this really light ink that's basically disappearing, you can change up the image. You can make that hair longer if you want. You can do all kinds of things to it and change it up as you go. You may also want to keep the packaging handy so that if some of your lines disappear, because they may underneath some of the Copic coloring, then you can still see what it's supposed to look like. Some people also, and this is another option for you, leave it in the misty when they do the coloring so they can then re-stamp over top of it. And if you want to just re-stamp the eyes and the, the mouth and that sort of thing and not have to draw them, then that would be one option for you. But I'm going to draw mine in pencil on top at the very end. So don't worry that it's feeling kind of mushy for the moment because when we get in there with the pencil, you're going to get excited because it, it's going to have a lot of pop to it. It has a very, I don't know, childlike storybook kind of feel to it with this sort of coloring. So that's why I'm going to make it a series. I have one more done that's scheduled here to come on YouTube soon and I will try to do some more in the future and we'll call it by the same name Copic Craft and Pencil so that you can find them easily if you want to find the whole series of them. And I've done this before a time or two so if I could find those videos and figure out what they were because I didn't title them with this, so I don't know if I can find them again, then uh, I will add them to a playlist so you can watch them all. So here I'm looking at the stamp on the packaging so that I can actually draw in some of these parts. I drew the eyes in black and the nose and the mouth in brown, and I'm just going to add a little highlight to the cheeks and to the nose. And look at how that makes that little face sparkle. You can also deepen up your shading with your pencil on top of the Copic. So if your shading didn't come out perfectly, then you always have the opportunity to fix it a little more. Just don't use your Copic over top of the pencil. You want to save that, that pencil work for the very end because the, the Copic marker will do weird things on top of wax. In addition to which, if you have a lot of Copic marker on top of a lot of pencil, you could ruin your nibs. And I don't want anybody to ruin nibs. So there you go. Now I'm taking my white pencil and adding some nice highlights on this white shirt that didn't look white before, but look how it pops 
when you just add a few highlights in a few areas. My students who have taken the drawing course, if you got to the section on light and shadow, you've been playing with your toned paper in a toned sketchbook. And this is the same kind of an idea. you are already got your mid-tone down, so now we're learning how to add our highlights and our shadows. So I added too much highlight here. Guess what I can do? I can go over it with my black pencil and take away some of that highlight so it doesn't look like our little kid has gray hair. So I don't know if this is a boy or girl. You can make it push it one way or the other to look like one or the other. But I kind of think it looks almost like a little boy here. Just possibly. But if you made the eyes with a little tiny bit of eyelashes or something, then you might end up with something that looks like a little girl instead. And when you're using these light stamp lines, you can adjust it and make it look like whatever you want it to look like. So I'm adding just a few little lines of the dark pencil on the shadow side of everything with my black pencil, just to add that contrast. Because when you have the contrast between the white highlights and those black shadows, then the pencil, the rest of the pencil colors are basically your tonal colors and the rest of it is giving you the shadow, the dimension and everything. I decided to use a white pen for a few highlight areas, including the, the shoelaces, so they look like they're painted on shoelaces. And then for the valentine, and the valentine could look like it's a heart on the t-shirt if you don't put a shadow behind it. So look what happens all of a sudden when you add a black shadow behind that valentine, bada boom, Bada bing, it starts to pop up away from this little kid holding the uh, holding the valentine. Cute, huh? And your shadow underneath of the child can be done either with your Copic markers or with your pencil, whichever you wish. I find that something like a soft shadow like this works really great with the Copics because they blend in so nicely into the paper, that sort of thing. So there's my little finished card. I just mounted it onto some red cardstock, die cutting the panel itself with a little fancy die to add a little bit of interest to it. And look how beautiful and simple that was. Okay, maybe not simple, but it was beautiful. <laughs> and here's the other card that's coming up very soon here on YouTube. So make sure you're subscribed if you want to see that one. If it's already posted, then I'll have it linked here on the end screen so you can jump right over and see it. And I will see you guys next time. Have a really awesome day. Remember all the supplies are in the linked in the description down below in the doobly-doo. And I will talk to you later. Go make something beautiful. Bye-bye.